Good evening. Welcome everyone to the Microgenesis webinar this evening. I wanted to put this together so that you had a chance to ask your personal questions of two of the co-founders, one who is going to share uh, with me kind of the trajectory of the company Microgenesis, how the uh, the U.S. results are going and the path really to helping women like Christina, who was 11 years struggling to conceive, had eight failed IVF attempts. And after going through the program with Microgenesis in just three months, she became pregnant. And that is her miracle baby right there. We love those stories. We're so happy to invite Augustina to join us and Gabby. Um, Gabby is on, uh, is not on camera, but she is in the audience, so she's available to answer your questions as well. August, welcome. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Hi, Alice. How are you? It's great I'm to hot. be here. I'm hot, hot, hot in, in the Pacific, in the U.S. right now, but I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled you could join us this evening. Yeah, yeah. It, here in Argentina, it's a little bit more cold <laughs> because we are in winter. <laughs> So, but uh, it's 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 a good weather. I hope uh, I will be there in the U.S. in the next month. So good. I hope to see you in person then. I will make yeah. it happen this time. Yeah. I'll make it happen. So I think August. I want to start with hearing a little bit about Christina's story and kind of mirror it up with the microgenesis story, right? Because this is everything that you and Gabby stand for and are passionate about. It's helping women like Christina, who probably showed up to you with no hope, and you not only restored her hope, you you helped get the baby in her arms. Yeah, the baby name is Emma. Christina was one of our uh, patients that were recruited in our previous clinical study across Spain and Argentina. Uh, as you can see here, he has been looking for pregnancy for more than 10 years, uh, well, they have done with, with her couple, of course, a lot of treatments, a IBF, also we donated oocytes. Um, well, after that, we met her. She was included in the study. Uh, we diagnosed her with our test and she followed up the treatment. Um, after a new cycle of IBF, she got pregnant. So this is one of our patients that got pregnant during the study. We have today 129 babies of that study, so we are very happy. But well, we have started with the hardest cases, cases like Christina, uh, because these are the patients that are hopeless, as you know. So they are the first adopters of our technology. So amazing. We're so happy to, to see her. I know that's a that's a really powerful story. When you go into an infertility clinic, you love seeing all the baby pictures on the wall, but when you've been struggling to get there yourself it's hard to picture your baby on the wall at some point. So I, it's so helpful to understand the stories behind the babies. Now, Microgenesis is known as a precision health and wellness company that helps people restore their fertility potential. So you, can you connect us to the link between you know, gut imbalances, why the microbiome in particular is so important for, I think we can go to the next slide on this one, why the microbiome is so important and I love this slide that you call it the fertile biome. Take, take us through that, that microbiome science as it relates to your fertility potential. Yeah, well, uh, as most of the people know right now, there are a lot of factors that like stress, hormonal treatment, uh, maybe foods that affect the microbiome. The microbiome is uh, very important for the health. And once you have uh, the microbiome affected at your gut, uh, your gut is like a one line of cells uh, that are connected with your immune system. So when the gut is, the microbiome of the gut is affected by main by these factors, the immune system is affected and you became like in a leaky gut uh, condition. And in response to this uh, imbalance of the microbiome, these immune cells get depolarized and secrete small RNA molecules, which we call microRNAs. These are the, like the connection between the microbiome and the immune system. And these microRNAs could travel through the blood and affect different organs in the entire body, uh, organs like the reproductive tissue. That's why we collect them in the vaginal swab and we analyze these microRNAs to see which was the impact at the microbiome level in the gut of our patients. 
So we noticed that our patients had these microRNAs affected at the reproductive tissue and also at the guts. And we can fix it because it's a microbiome disbalance. So we can restock with probiotics. We can treat and restore the leaky gut condition. So we can try to recover a healthy gut. So as I understand it, and just to, to kind of, uh, I think, underscore the complexity and the effectiveness of the diagnostic part, you're looking at three separate types of samples from your patient population, correct? You have a blood sample, you have a saliva sample, and then you have a vaginal swab. And the uniqueness about that, as I understand it, August, is that you can, if you only look at the microbiome as it relates to vaginal swab, or you only look at it even as it relates to a fecal sample, or if you only look at it as it relates to saliva, you might be able to look at someone's organisms within their gut and say, well, this is, this is what your microbiome is comprised of. But if you don't look at the impact of that microbiome, you might, wouldn't know if it's a balanced microbiome or an unbalanced microbiome. Mute. Oh, there you uh, go. <laughs> sorry, I'm here again. So we, uh, it's not only about the microbiome itself, the microorganism that we are trying to connect with a healthy gut and with infertility in our patients, but it's the impact that this microbiome right. uh, makes in your body. So that's why we collect a saliva sample and a blood sample, and we can see the metabolic impact of this measuring different kinds of um, hormones like insulin, vitamins, uh, some immune markers like secretory IgA. So we can see the real impact of a microbiome disbalance in the, in the human body, particularly in the women. That's why we select these three samples uh, to give us a more broad view of our patient's health and to try to work in all the, the points that are affected in their health. And that's the main difference between microgenesis research and approach and other microbiome solutions out there, right? Is that functional level of testing. You wanna know the actual impact because it's so highly personalized and individualized. Yes, it's completely personalized. And um, the test, because all, we all, of course, we test your samples, patient samples, and it's functional because we are not testing the microbiome itself but the, these small molecules that are secreted in response to a different microbiome disbalance and also the impact that these small molecules has in the body. That's why we call it like a functional microbiome test. And we can work with all these biomarkers together to try to understand what's going on in, in the woman. I like it so much. And we have a, a quick video that we'll play in just a moment and then get to how many different types of microbiomes there are and how many different types of combinations of solutions. Because what we don't want is, is for women to think, well, but I'm gonna try the anti-inflammatory diet just in case I have inflammation and then feel bad afterwards and not connect why it's not a one size fit all. So I think we'll, we'll show the video now. And if you could, mm -hmm. I think we'll show the video now. Let's try that again. Mm -hmm. If you could talk us through what we're seeing here August. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, this is a woman, a patient like you. These are all the things that could affect your your microbiome itself, food, medication, uh, also your your parents and all the relationships. All of them are affecting the microbiome. As you can see here, this is your gut. These are the microbes here uh, that, and when this is affected, the it's the leaky gut condition is this. You can see the cells split one to each other. Mm. It's affecting the immune system and they secrete these molecules, which we call microRNAs. They are very small, but we can measure precisely with, by real-time PCR. And these small molecules that are particularly in your gut in response to this microbiome disbalance could travel through the human body, as you can see here, brain, tissues, um, ovaries, all of them, and they are connected with hypothyroidism, autoimmunity, anemia, and everything of this is decreasing your reproductive potential. And as I told you, they travel through your, through your body and they travel also through your reproductive tissue, and we collect it into the vagina. 
That's why we test you in a vaginal swab. This sample goes to the lab. We collect this sample with the blood and the saliva sample, and that's how we get a report. And in the report, you can see not also the values of all these biomarkers, but also the combination of nutraceutics, probiotics, and diets that are specific and personalized according the results that we get. So let me make sure that we understand this. So when the functional microorganisms are missing, the immune cells can attack the intestinal barrier and that can cause havoc kind of in the body. Yes, the immune, the immune cells, in fact, they are not attacking the gut itself. They are secreting a lot of molecules some of them are these microRNAs, and this one of them, for example, the mid-21, is associated with the disruption of the junction of the cells. So they secrete these molecules, and these molecules affect the conjunction of the cells. This is are the molecules. Got it. And, and they call they call the gut the second brain, right? So on your image there to see that you know, that those microRNAs can travel to the brain as well. Is that where you see anxiety and depression connected mm -hmm. to gut health? Yes, exactly. It's called the second brain, as you said, because it, there is a very tight connection between the microbiome in your gut and your brain. Not also because all of the microbiomes are affecting. And once you are uh, fixing one microbiome, the others are fixing at the same time. That's why the probiotics, uh, the use of probiotics is orally. So we start with the gut, but all the microbiomes are connected and fix it. But particularly with brain, uh, these molecules that travel through the brain, to the brain, we can see sign, symptoms of mood, uh, different kinds of moods in patients, anxiety, depression, and all of them after doing our supplementation, um, food habits and everything, they start to feeling better. That's mm -hmm. why we are trying to, to collect, to correct all of the things that we are seeing that are not okay. Well, this is that, that's my case in going through the program. Certainly, you know, anxiety and depression is something that I've dealt with since being diagnosed with cancer 14 years ago. And I sort of just assumed, well, it's just part of going through cancer. It's a part of going through treatment. It's a part of the aftermath of it, right? It's a part of the, the, the hardship you know, or, you know, going through my story to myself was chemotherapy changed my brain. Well, maybe chemotherapy only changed my gut. Maybe it didn't change my brain, right? Maybe it yeah, changed my sure. gut. And I just, it took me 14 years to find you so that I could restore my gut health. I think that the key here, August, is that most of us who are struggling to conceive or, or, and have been struggling for years actually might have a lot of symptoms of leaky gut and have never made the connection that their gut health could be impacting their fertility potential. So what are some of the other symptoms besides anxiety and depression? I'm assuming foggy thinking in the brain, but what are some of those other full, you know, sim symptoms that, that you see commonly in the women that you treat? Yes, they have mainly like uh, gut symptoms, like they being bloated, they feel bloated after eating or something. They, they have experienced diarrhea or constipation for like years in their life and they assume like this is normal for them. Uh, some of them has like, it's very connected also with the cycles, with menstrual cycles uh, and with all the ovary response. So patients uh, that are very irregular start to regularize their cycles after our supplementation because I, as we have been talking, it's everything connected. It's not only the brain and the gut, it's also your reproductive tissue. And um, also with the, with the sleeping conditions, yeah. they start to sleep better. They feel like not that much tired. They feel like with more energy. These are the things that they are saying all the time. Most of them say something that it's very associated with gut a microbiome disbalance that uh, before our program, they think that they are not going to lose their weight, like never, mm -hmm. <laughs> because they have been trying a lot of diets and nothing worked for them. And with our food supplementation and with our diet, they start to lose the weight. So that the diet is also personalized according to the treatment. It's not like a cosmetic diet. It's, we are trying to teach patients how to eat according to their microbiome. And it is so highly personalized. So when I look at this woman, this woman is not me and she's not you. 
because mm. we, we are so unique, whether it's country to country, region to region, family to family, right? You, mm. the, and that over time, all of these, what you have, have researched so well is that there's actually 64 different groupings of these infertile phenotypes or these microbiomes that are connected to reproductive potential. How did you even discover 64? That must have been a lot of information you had to collect. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of information, but it's the combination between all the biomarkers that we tested. That's why we've got 64. Uh, we combined the result from the vaginal swab of the micronate test that we are doing together with the saliva sample and the blood uh, markers that we are testing. And the combination between these biomarkers is the result in different in 64 different infertile phenotypes. There are more that are more frequent. There are some that are more frequent, some others that are not that frequent, but they are not only pointing about which is the microbiome disbalance, but how this microbiome is affecting particularly in you, your metabolic condition, because not all the patients with the same microbiome disbalance has the same effect in their insulin, in their cholesterol, in, because there are it's nothing not connected with the other things. It's everything connected. That's why we have this, this amount of phenotypes. That makes sense. And this also explains why you can't just go, oh, well, I read a book about the anti-inflammatory diet. I'm going to do everything that I read in that book and then be confused when it doesn't work for you. And it's not a one size fits all. And so let's kind of get to that, the different treatment combinations because it's so important to understand that it's a, it's drug free. And I think so many of us recognize that we live in a, a fairly toxic environment these days, right? That we can't do anything about whether it's the emissions in the air or it's in the quality of the food or it's the, the water sources, right? Or antibiotics given to the, the meat products that we eat. I think that that women in the market are kind of waking up to, I'm trying to put, you know, good things in my body, not bad things in my body. And in particular, if, if they have tried everything else and they really want to go down a path, you know, where it's more natural or a drug-free path, take us through the 53 personalized treatment combinations. You know, there's so many, but there's three core components of fertility restoration. Can you walk us through those components? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, it's a natural solution, as we have been talking, because we, don't, we are not using drugs at all. We combine uh, three different and very important components at the same time. It's not only about probiotics, because we have different blends of probiotics according to the microbiome study, but we combine these probiotics with nutraceutics. What nutraceutics are vitamins, minerals, some amino acids that are important for you, for your health and the probiotics and nutraceutics we combine with a diet. It's not a cosmetic diet, but it's different um, nutritional habits that patients need to, to fulfill because uh, it's very important. Uh, the food or maybe the components of the foods are the ones that are affecting the microbiome. So we need to take away some of these food components during these 75 uh, days to try to Restock with the probiotics and everything goes to normal uh, normal values again. So it's a 75 days of restoring process. I know it's a long process, but we are working with uh, natural solutions. So it's a process. We need to uh, become healthier again. So it's not from one day to the other. This is something more associated with health. <laughs> I, I, when it comes to how long most of us were struggling to conceive before we found you, it feels like a very short period of time, 75 yeah. days. Yes, you know, but I, when patients yeah. uh, listen 75 days, sometimes they say, okay, this is too much time. But right. since it's a process of healing your microbiome, uh, it's the amount of time that you need to be yeah. healthy, to be a healthy mother and to have a healthy baby. In the right, future. right. Can you talk about why it's important to not take a probiotic every day? Because I think that the over-the-counter probiotic movement has us all taking these very generalized probiotics, which has led to even more gut imbalance without us really knowing. Well, in fact, the probiotics are good, but you need to know which is your microbiome itself. You don't know what are you needing. 
uh, if you need a lactobacillus strain or a bifidobacterium, if you are needing some yeast or not because of your profile. So the first point is not to, to go and buy over the counter any probiotic because they are supposed to be good for you because you right. don't know, in fact, if these specific strains that are inside these probiotics are good for you, maybe they are good for me, but right. not for you. The only way to know it is to study, to do these kind of studies um, that are studying specifically the microbiome. And the other thing is that you're, since you have like millions of bacteria, you can restock your gut all days with different strains, don't knowing what is in your gut at that time because you will have an overgrowth of species that are not good for you mm. and if you have a leaky gut condition that is that was not fixed before this could be like not very good for you at the same time because right. when bacteria are not uh, attaching to the cells as they are supposed to do so this right. is something that you need to think about it and to try to see which is the best for you that makes perfect sense. I was quite surprised by the diet plan that I was put on because I had been eating the type of diet that I was told to avoid for a very long time. And because I kind of bought into the old idea of like fermented foods is really good for me. And, you know, I was fermenting everything. I made my own fermented coconut pudding. I made my own fermented sauerkraut. You know, I loved those products. I was drinking my kombucha even that was making me belchy and bloated afterwards, I was like, it's kombucha, it's supposed to be good for me. <laughs> so I think that that was the one thing that I was so surprised by. Well, well, my goodness, I've been doing the wrong thing for like 15 years, I've been doing the wrong thing, you yeah, know? Very common because uh, like, it's very common that you start to see in, in media, in websites that kombucha or fermented foods are good. They are not bad, but they are not good to, for everyone, right? You need to know if they fix for your microbiome. So, yeah. because maybe you are getting the things worse, uh, for example, drinking kombucha. It's right. not, maybe it's not the adequate for you. And it's not something that I have to stay away forever. It's just that during the program, when we're in the healing phase, we don't want to introduce something that would be counteractive or, you know, counterproductive to what we're trying to heal. Yeah, yeah, I exactly. might be able to have a kombucha someday, just not today. Yeah, yeah for sure. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't, to... I don't miss those foods. So is that a common thing? You know, in probably the first couple of weeks for any woman going through the program, you know, change is hard. We're we're humans, right? So change can be quite difficult. But those first two weeks, I think that sometimes we focus on it's going to be so hard to give that thing up. But then you just eat the foods that are listed on the list, and all of a sudden you feel so good. <laughs> yeah well probably in the future if you drink kombucha you will feel bloated after that probably you will drink it because you love it but right. you will notice that this is not the, the good of a good option for you right and that's why most of our patients keep attached to the diet or to some of the habits that uh, we gave sure. us during the process because they feel better they feel no bloated they feel uh, like they have a better digestion of everything yes so, this is one of the things that we have heard a lot of our patients. Right. One of the things when I, I spoke to some of the other women going through the program at the same time as me is we were all going to the bathroom so consistently and everyone was so shocked. I mean, women, we talk about our bodily functions when we're going through fertility things, right? We talk about everything. And, it, it, you know, first everybody was a little shy, like, is this TMI? But it was actually shocking to hear that we all made it appear normal that if we didn't, if we didn't go to the bathroom every day, if we didn't poop every day and yeah. no one thought that that was a problem until all of a sudden we were all going multiple times a day going through your program. They were like, Oh my gosh, how did I live so many years? Not going that often. <laughs> yeah. No yes. wonder I was bloated. Yes. Because we normalize these kind of things about going to the bathroom, for example, and they notice these changes once they start the program. And they say, okay, right. I am going every day. This is great. Yeah. I am feeling better. Maybe this is part of feeling better. So right. this part of regulates your gut health. And I think the other thing that was so noticeable too is kind of that blow issue, but, but the full bodied uh, lack of water retention. Everyone kind of spoke to like, oh my gosh, I didn't 
you know, I didn't notice that my wedding ring was so tight because I got used to that too. Cause like that water retention happens slowly over time when you're, you're getting in, in, inflamed and you don't even realize it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we are uh, like healing your gut, but at the same time we are working in all your body. So we'll, you will experience different kinds of effects. Some of our patients have like skin improvements or maybe hair improvements because we are healing also the microbiome of your skin. So right. uh, that will depend on what you have uh, abnormal. And that's uh, the, the healing process of, of each women in particular. Not all of them are going to experience the same improvements that will depend on what they have broken before. Right, amazing. Well, the, the study that, that you did had really extraordinary results that were, were recently published in a very prestigious journal. So take us through the study and, and remind us how many difficult to conceive pregnant, uh, difficult to conceive patients like Christina that went through this program with you. Look at all those cute babies. <laughs> Yeah, these are what some of them. Oh. Uh, we have recruited like 287 patients uh, across Spain and Argentina. As I told you, Christina was one of them. Uh, they have been seeking for pregnancy in average like 10 years uh, and failed in average for IVF implants. Uh, like, that's a lot. And half of them have failed also donated oocytes. So that's wow. uh, a lot <laughs> of failure. And well, we enroll them in the study, we test them uh, like in the vaginal swab, saliva and blood markers. And 75% of them got pregnant during six months because um, they, well, they go for a, for a next IVF attempt after our treatment. But what was amazing is that they are very hard cases and 32 of them got pregnant spontaneously without IVF. Oh my so goodness! In Amazing. the process of trying of planning the next IVF attempt, they got pregnant. So that was great for us because, uh, well, they got pregnant without hormones, without needing the IVF. So that's why we are right now trying to move uh, to patients like like are at the beginning of the fertility journey. Women like what well, we call it Silvina because she was our first patient that uh, had an. A, prove an IBF before and we want to help them before IBF not only because right. we can improve the IBF success uh, but also because we want them to be healthier to become a mother maybe it's going to be natural maybe it's an IUI or maybe it's an IBF I don't know which is going to be the way to be a mom but the good thing is to be healthier at that time August, I, I love that approach too, is, is, you know, we were so focused on the end result and, and a lot of times women's health is suffering along the way. They're not even noticing. That's what I'm kind of hearing about this is that we, we kind of stop noticing that our health is actually suffering and that infertility is, is often the output of these health conditions that we don't, we didn't previously until you guys came along, we didn't really have good diagnostic tools to know this. We kind of talked about it very loosely, like, oh, the gut must be connected because it's 70% responsible for immunity. And, you know, there were all these assumptions, right? And I think that as women, we're, we so desperately try to self-treat when there is nowhere to go. And yeah. one of the things that I, I would love for you to touch on is the impact of that leaky gut, even if you do get pregnant on yeah. your developing baby, because there's going to be an impact on, on the health of, of your baby. Yeah, for sure. All, all of that of these patients were classified as unexplained infertility right. because uh, they haven't been diagnosed as a male factor of a ovarian factor, dual factor. They have been uh, doing all the tests that were at the market, uh, at the fertility market right now. And well, that's, that was uh, the diagnosis, but 80% of them have a leaky gut condition. So wow. there is not exactly an unexplained infertility. There was a condition that could be fixed. And that's the, the idea of our studies, to try to give a little bit of light at this unexplained infertility or, or at these patients that are trying to get pregnant, they feel healthy, and they are doing all the studies and everything became, became normal. This is very frustrating for them because they say, okay, everything is normal, but I am not getting pregnant. This is not possible. So it should be something. And that's why we started this study with 
those patients. Oh, it, it's one of the most frustrating non-diagnoses out there. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I wish they would drop the word diagnosis from unexplained. It's like, just, just admit, you don't know what's wrong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? And, and yet probably, what is it? 70, 80% of the time, probably unexplained infertility could, could be diagnosed as leaky gut. How, yes. What would you guess? Uh, yeah, around 80% of them has a leaky gut condition or some autoimmune biomarkers. Like, and it's like, it's not a diagnosis itself, but it's a condition that sure. uh, their microbiome or the immune system is damaged and we can yeah. fix it. That's amazing. Now, then, uh, can you tell us the average age of the women who spontaneously got pregnant or the women that were in the, in, in the study? The, well, the average of this study was 40. Because wow. patients, some of them were under ovodonation, so it's a little bit high, but uh, this is this was the, the average that we have. That's amazing. They have been seeking for pregnancy 10 years, so that's a lot of time. Amazing. And so this is one of the success stories. Well, this and is Irina, our first uh, alpha user, we call uh, her because uh, she tried our test and supplementation before going to a fertility clinic. Wow. She, has the indica- she had the indication to go to a fertility clinic, but she didn't want to go <laughs> because she said, okay, I am young. I want to try different things or new things. Um, well, we test her, we diagnose her. Uh, she has a leaky gut condition in particular. And she did a treatment. She did it perfectly with the diet and everything. She lost a lot of weight and not that much, but she lost, she, she lost, she lost it. And then she became pregnant. And now we have a Alvarito, Alvaro, it's, it's his <laughs> name. And he was born in the middle of the pandemic. Wow. So yeah, that's well, one of the first babies without IVF that we have after our clinical study. Amazing. Just amazing. Well, thank you so much for walking us through that presentation. Um, I, you know, it, it really is so inspiring. I feel fantastic, even though I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit sweaty and hot today, just from, you know, the, the hot weather in the Pacific West right now. But um, I, I do notice some of the things that right away, I felt so calm throughout the day. You know, I felt like I was able to cope with stress, just eating the diet eating so many vegetables a day. And, you know, and and I noticed that my father came to visit. So he's eating like I'm eating. He cheats though. He cheats (laughs) and we get on him about cheating because he'll, he'll sneak things. He'll (laughs) he'll sneak, you know, eating my son's Oreo or something. But what we noticed is that when I make him my same breakfast of vegetables and a couple of eggs in the morning. And I I do seven vegetables every morning. I saute them up and then have my two eggs with it every single morning. And he has lots of energy through the day and he doesn't need to take a nap. Then if it's a morning that I have to rush and I don't have time and eat the bagel with cream cheese, he (laughs) takes a nap that day. Okay. That's great. Yes. In fact, a family microbiome is connected. The microbiome of the mom with the kids, with your partner, uh, because you are sharing a lot of habits, uh, at mainly food, um, everything, the lifestyle is connected. So the microbiome is connected. And that's why in the future, we are planning, studying not also the women, but also the partner mm. and also the kids. So we can fix the family. We are trying right. to build families and we want healthy families. So that's right. Well, it cured. I mean, I tell you what, this was the biggest shock of my life is that I spent probably, let's see, I'm, I'm kind of old. So about more than 30 years with a skin condition called keratosis Yeah, and nothing else changed in my life except going through your program. And one day I, re- I rubbed my arm and I realized I don't have any bumps anymore. I have no keratosis anymore. No yeah. cream, no potion, no nothing. I'm doing nothing except, you know, being on the microgenesis program. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, well, this is something that could happen because of the skin microbiome. Sometimes uh, your habits or your food and your hormones and everything is affecting not also your gut microbiome, but also your skin. The, mm-hmm. These microorganisms are also in their skin in all of their of your mucosa. So once we are changing or fixing one, you are fixing all of them. So uh, this is something that it's respectable in the program. And I am very glad that you experienced also that. Oh, it's great. It's fantastic. So 
Let's make sure that we leave everyone knowing where to go. They can go visit microgenesis.net. Um, we'll include a link when we publish this webinar. Um, in fact, I think I'm pretty sure I can put it into the chat. So let's do that. We'll do microgenesis.net. And if there are further questions that people have, they can actually book some time with either you or Gabby right from um, a specific link. So we should probably include that too. And yeah. there is a sign up in the website where patients can uh, fill a questionnaire and they are going to realize if they are, uh, the, if the program is suitable for them. Mm. We are putting all the symptoms that are very common in our patients. So if they fill that questionnaire, they will know if the program is for them or not. And we can have a, we can, they can book a consultation with us, with Gabby or with me uh, to talk about the test, the supplementation and to give all the information that, that they need. Incredible. Well, I wanna thank you so much, August. I think I wanna thank you, both you and Gabby, A, for your commitment to women's health. You know, you are two female researchers who have just devoted your life to pushing science forward for women like me. And I wanna personally thank you for that and thank the Microgenesis team for bringing this solution to our patient population here in the US and through Fertility Answers. This is just an incredibly exciting opportunity because I'm seeing the results, right? When I talk to the women who have gone through the program, I'm like, oh my gosh, she feels so much better. And oh my gosh, she already got pregnant. And you know, it's, it's such an exciting time to know that we can truly make a difference for people where really they had just about all but given up hope. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for giving us this possibility to communicate our science and, and to give us the, the possibility to say to the patients that we are here to help them. So if you have any doubt, you can contact us anytime. That's great. And um, in Spanish, doubt is question, everyone. I learned that by working with these wonderful women <laughs> with their beautiful ag accents. And I was like, doubt, I don't have a doubt. I just have a question. <laughs> this is kind of a Spanglish for us. But like, we are doing our best to try to communicate. No, you're doing wonderful. You're doing wonderful. I just had to learn that one little question meant or that one word meant question. So we are, you know, Microgenesis is a very open company. So you can get all your questions answered, like she said. Um, hop on over the Fertility Answers app if you need more information too. You can always communicate with me via our text chat system or through email. Um, and I often even make myself available via cell if you really need it. So we're here for you. Thanks everybody. Have a great night and we'll see you soon. Bye for now. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you to everyone.